We wish India all the very best. More than eight months, more than eight months uh, on the seat of uh, presidency, India has done tremendously. Pretty sure that India will achieve what uh, it wants to be. India could be uh, one of the important leaders of Global South. We have close relations socially, culturally, historically. In a few days from now, in just a few weeks, in fact, India is going to host the G20 Leaders Summit. Uh, as a former chair, what are your expectations from it? Pleasure to be with uh, ANI again. Um, on G20 Summit, of course, I wish India the very best. It's a big, one of the biggest engagement of leaders. Um, so we wish India all the very best logistically and substantively. And for sure, India, um, looking at uh, already seven, more than eight months, more than eight months uh, on the seat of uh, presidency, India has done tremendously. Um, in bridging all uh, differences, so I'm pretty sure that India will achieve what uh, it wants to be. Ma'am, India has put some uh, ambitious agendas on the table. Mm. How do you think these are different with the ones that you had during your presidency? Okay, um, this um, presidency, um, the added value of India's presidency um, is that India comes in uh, the second after Indonesia as emerging economies. And as you may know, uh, under this, the G20 presidency, four emerging economies will be in the helmet until 2025. So India's presidency, as we have agreed since um, being Troika for um, one year almost, uh, we have consultation, coordination to ensure, one, the voice of emerging economies are heard, Second, continuity and convergence of agenda of emerging economies are on table. And third, making sure that the continuity and convergence not only in the G20, but also between multilateral fora also happen and for the benefit of emerging economies. Ma'am, Russia-Ukraine war uh, is something which is undoubtedly would be on the agenda and would be the most watched thing. Mm. What are your views on that? Well, for sure, um, in Indonesia, hope that the G20 summit will bring all leaders together on the table. We need to ensure that all people in the countries of G20 are willing uh, to have open mind on common concerns of all, rather than focusing on uh, conflicts, tensions between countries, because as you may know, uh, global world, global south in particular, um, are facing difficulties, challenges currently with disasters, with climate change, with uh, post-pandemic economy recovery, many issues that needs to be discussed. So we do hope that countries in G20, including the observers, see more into the common concerns rather than the tensions and the conflicts. Ma'am, since you mentioned about the uh, Global South, how do you see India becoming a voice of the Global South? Well, um, you know that Indonesia and India since millenniums ago, even in the 50s also, in the 40s and 50s, we fought the colonialism, imperialism together. So I believe that we both um, are head on to uh, voice the um, concerns of emerging economies, uh, developing nations, in particular the global south. I think, um, like I said, India has done tremendously uh, in the helmet of G20, and I'm, I really sure believe that uh, India could be uh, one of the important leaders of Global South. Uh, Ma'am, South Africa is hosting the BRICS Summit soon. Have you applied for the membership or <laughs> any possibility of Indonesia joining the BRICS? 
Well, there is strong indication, positive indication that our leader, the President Joko Widodo, will come to the BRICS summit as friends of BRICS. Um, we haven't applied uh, for big BRICS membership because Indonesia has main principles in uh, international engagement. Always we are open to anything, everything, but at the same time learning from past experience, including APEC, you know, APEC, um, APEC, learning from ASEM, ASEM, as well as ASEAN and EAS. When it comes to membership, the criteria, the um, uh, interest, the modalities needs to be clear first uh, before uh, engagement or enlargement in this matter um, is on place. So uh, Indonesia is open-minded in when it comes to membership, but the criteria and modalities needs to be very clear. And is your president coming for the G20 summit? The confirmation is there? Positive indications are there because we need to uh, support, to give strong support to India as Troika of G20 presidency. Ma'am, my last question. In Jakarta, ASEAN foreign ministers meeting took place last month, of which, of course, Indonesia is a part too. Uh, uh, our foreign minister during his interaction said that there is a natural attachment between these two countries. How did you saw that statement and this ASEAN grouping in the meeting? Well, natural attachment is for sure um, a reality, uh, a factual indeed. First, you know that we swap presidency of G20 last year and this year with India. You, you know, no countries, <laughs> when it's not closed, will swap this kind of thing, the big uh, issue like this. Second, we also see that in ASEAN India, um, we, uh, as the chair, making sure that there is an elevation of uh, engagement between ASEAN and India. So uh, this chairmanship of Indonesia in ASEAN is to ensure that the elevation of comprehensive strategic partnership between ASEAN and India will be concretize in um, more implementable programs so that we will uh, make sure that um, the epicentrum of growth and also uh, where ASEAN and India matters are there. So I think uh, natural means we have um, the past, in the past we have close relations, socially, culturally, historically, uh, but at the same time, at the present and future, we need to also ensure that those footprints of the past is going to be a very strong building blocks for the brighter future between Indonesia and India.